Hi guys. It is a fine summer day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization somewhere in the green mountains of Vermont where we are looking at a high of 74 degrees here in mid-July. Hallelujah on this lovely Sunday morning where are we? July 14th, 2019, somewhere around there. And what I love about Sunday is I get to wear like both my hats and bringing you my doomsday sermon for the week on that one channel and my Monday uh, chronicle of the collapse. Uh, <coughs> and so we're going to look at this whole notion, which I admit I don't know how much of a doomsday sermon this is, but this whole notion about climate emergencies, you know, as Paul Beckwith has been trying to do for how long, declaring a climate emergency. And exactly, all right, let's declare a climate emergency and uh, see what that means. So we're going to be looking at this article in Vice uh, about that coming up. But a couple of notes that I want to make before getting into this, you know, I, I am... <clears throat> been hard on NPR radio quite a bit uh, on YouTube making fun because they're so f fun to make fun of. Uh, but anyway, there's this show on NPR called On the Media that is actually intelligent programming and the one that they were running this morning, uh, what I've been listening to is uh, they had on, on the media, I'm going to put the link on here. This is about probably a 20-minute interview, uh, which they've titled The Psychological Toll of Working as a Climate Scientist. Now, I read this article from Mother Jones a few days ago on Collapse Chronicles, this excellent article in Mother Jones written by this fellow named David Korn. David Korn. And so uh, on, on the media, I guess this is host Brooke Gladstone. One of, at, uh, Brooke is one of the more intelligent uh, journalists we have working. And what they discuss is journalism. It's a journalist interviewing journalists about journalism and whatnot and uh, so I highly recommend if you miss this uh, podcast on uh, on the media uh, I'm going to put the link and encourage you to listen to that and then but we're going to go over here to vice now of course uh, you know, probably five of my Alert Tribes members have sent me this article from Vice from a few days ago titled, Climate Despair is Making People Give Up on Life. And so I had set that one aside and it was going to be my Sunday Doomsday Sermon and my Monday Chronicle of the Collapse. But I see Sister Sandy has beat me to it. I, I emailed Sandy at like midnight last night uh, saying there, there, there's too many doomer fish in this little pool. So Sandy has already done a fine job over there on Environmental Coffee House uh, going over this article, Climate Despair is Making People Give Up on Life. So. I highly suggest, if you want to hear about that, uh, you go over to Environmental Coffee House and <coughs> listen to Sister Sandy uh, over there go over. But anyway, since Sandy has stolen my doomsday sermon, uh, so I got up this morning and thinking, okay, Hambone, since, uh, since it's such a race in the doomosphere, but anyway, Vice has come through with a brand new 
uh, with a brand new article. I think this is just today's Vice environment piece. Now, of course, the bright sun out here. I, uh, good God, guys, I have no idea where my cursor is. No clue where my cursor is. Why they make these white cursors against white backgrounds? Well, anyway, guys, I don't know. This might be a short sermon because I have no idea how to find my cursor. All right, finally a little strip of black background. And so what Vice is talking about today is, is a subject I've been needing to do uh, rants on here on YouTube. And this is this whole idea of declaring climate emergencies, which is exactly what I've been declaring uh, for how many years. You know, Paul Beckwith has his little red siren going on. And so finally, more and more people are declaring climate emergencies and we're having, uh, Vice is having some fun with this. All right, we, we, we've declared a climate emergency exactly like, 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 like so what? Uh, anyway, th this, is, th this is Vice News weighing in on this story. What declaring a climate emergency in the U.S. would actually do? And, and the answer, it, it will actually do nothing. Is the, is, is the long and short of it. Okay, what declaring a climate emergency in the U.S. would actually do, it would have no effect on policy, but some climate activists say it is a necessary part of a society-wide paradigm shift. There we go. So we shall see. Well, guys, I don't know. The bright sun out on this beautiful summer day. Uh, earlier this week, when Senator Bernie Sanders from right here in Vermont and Representatives Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Earl Blumenauer urged Congress to officially declare climate change, quote, an emergency. The siren's blaring announcement was largely greeted with shrugs and even eye rolls, even by those sympathetic to the goal of rapidly decarbonizing the economy. Decarb, you know, latest on this on this complete joke of decarbonizing the economy. Yes. Uh, the environmental site Grist compared it to the Office episode where Michael Scott thinks shouting, I declare bankruptcy, will make his financial troubles go away. Proclaiming an emergency, which many countries in U.S. cities have already done, does not guarantee any specific action. This is Alex Trembeth, Deputy Director of the Oakland-based Breakthrough Institute. I've had uh, been talking about the Breakthrough Institute recently. Quote, I am starting to worry that things like a national resolution declaring a climate emergency are just kind of meaningless. <laughs> Thank you. Tuesday's announcement was part of a long-running campaign, however, by a relatively obscure climate group whose approach is less concerned with the nuts and bolts of policy, meaning actually doing anything, and instead focuses on society-altering mobilization, a controversial strategy that has been embraced by young climate activists around the world. This is Margaret Klein 
Salomon, the founder and director of the Climate Mobilization, uh, who was helped work on the resolution, quote, obviously using the words climate emergency does not take any carbon out of the atmosphere, but what we are doing here is creating a paradigm shift. Now, I don't know, uh, okay, Klein Solomon, a psychologist by training, <clears throat> penned a manifesto of sorts with her 2016 paper titled, Leading the Public into Emergency Mode, a new strategy for the climate moment. Maybe that manifesto should have been my uh, sermon. Anyway, moving forward. The argument from, from that manifesto was that society is stuck in normal mode when it comes to climate change. We see the destabilization of our environment and all life on Earth as just one of many priorities calling for our attention. Quote, in normal mode, the individual or group feels relatively safe and secure and does not recognize any immediate existential or major moral threats, either because there is none or because they are in denial. She believes the primary goal of climate activists should be to confront society with the terrifying dangers of climate change, such as the fact that a million species could go extinct in our lifetime. Knowledge of these horrors along with a proportionately aggressive plan to address them might shift us into emergency mode, she wrote, which is a way of functioning, quote, that occurs when individuals or groups respond optimally to existential or moral emergencies. Okay, maybe we're going to find out exactly how we are supposed to respond optimally. Klein Salomon later linked it to the flow state experienced by pro skateboarders, big wave surfers, and other extreme athletes giving their full physical and mental attention to a task with conceivably deadly consequences. Of course, this is not the thinking favored by many mainstream climate groups, scientists, and advocates who tend to operate on the assumption that frightening the shit out of large swaths of the population can be paralyzing and dangerous. Quoting uh, Klein Salomon, there is this idea that you cannot scare people and fear does not work as a motivator. And this was really on this, uh, on the media, nearly the whole program was, was devoted to various aspects of this very subject. Uh, you know, the best way to shake clueless morons out of their stupor and get them away from their cute cat videos. But over recent years, a new generation of climate advocates, including the Sunrise Movement, Extinction Rebellion, and the school strikes inspired by Greta Thunberg, has embraced the idea that we do need to acknowledge the enormity of our crisis in order to effectively fight it. And over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again, 
every single one of these articles, the same was in the, in the original article that I was going to read that Sandy read. It comes up time and time again in this on the media piece talking about all of this. What, what is the best way to spur people to effective action? You know, or, or, or that this, or, or, or that scaring people with alarmism is going to keep people from doing anything about it. But what, what none of these articles say, they, they keep making this reference about it's, it's going to keep people from affecting action. But what they fail to note is there's nothing to do about it. it. Even if there was the technical ability to do a damn thing about climate change and every other one of the planetary boundaries, uh, what they fail to say is that if you spend any time studying this, you will understand there is no action. They just conveniently, this is just this little inconvenient truth that all of these damn articles, you know, talking about, all, you know, various aspects of this subject completely fail to mention is that it doesn't make any difference which tack you take because there is no effective action to take. But anyway, I'm, I'm just adding this as my own notes uh, because nobody is, is saying that. They just, they, they, they just talk about this mythical effective action we are supposed to take, whether from an individual uh, perspective or, uh, or, or a write-up to a global industrial society. That they keep they keep implying that there's an action that any of us can take when there is no action. The 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 toothpaste is out of the tube. The tipping points are tipping. Uh, the uh, the feedbacks are feeding back. Uh, the loop de loops are looping. Anyway, let me get back to the story because my little dog is uh, dying of heat stroke. Uh, okay, uh, this effectively fight it, the climate mobilization has helped support a campaign that has convinced hundreds of local governments in more than a dozen countries to declare climate emergencies. Klein Salomon sees this as a vindication for a more aggressive, uncompromising, and she hopes effective climate movement than previously has existed. Quote, the declarations are like the announcement, we are here. All right, we are here. Yet, Practically, this is getting back to the vice story. Yet, practically speaking, these types of revolution of resolutions have not actually accomplished all that much. One day, one day after Canada declared a climate emergency, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau approved a tar sands pipeline expansion. That could bring 600,000 barrels of additional oil per day to international markets. The UK's declaration came as local authorities supported plans to significantly expand coal mining in the UK. And guys, I don't know how much this uh, wind is. Uh, swallowing up what I'm saying here. Okay, even if the resolution put forward by left-wing Democrats were to be adopted by Congress, 
which is not likely with Republicans controlling the Senate, it would not have any legally binding effect on U.S. climate or energy policy. Uh, this is University of California Berkeley law professor Dan Farber. Quote, it would put the U.S. on record as taking the problem really seriously and seeing a need for urgent action. From a lawyer's point of view, I don't know that that accomplishes a lot. Yes, uh, I've already forgotten who Trembath is. His comment on it is, it would be one thing if the resolution or the goal of a climate emergency was to, like, nationalize the electricity in auto sectors and mandate clean energy and clean vehicle production. Tim Breath, Trim Bath, I'm sorry, I've already forgot who you are, brother, uh, said instead he thinks, quote, they're sort of declaring an emergency for declarations sake. But C Klein Salomon thinks critiques like these are missing the larger point. The push for emergency declarations is just one tactic among many to encourage a massive societal shift in thinking. Quote, we're talking about the deaths of billions of people and the collapse of civilization. We need to pull every lever, she said. And uh, there you go. So this article, I like this guy, was written by Jeff, Jeff Denbicki. He is the author of Are We Screwed? How a new generation is fighting to save, to save, fight climate change. And then at the end of this, all of these actions we can take to uh, fight climate change. And no, you stay. Don't you jump off of there. I want to put what uh, Vice News has. After you read this story, their next story is, watch this next, how to cook a steak with cliff crooks. So uh, after you've uh, declared your climate emergency and uh, told the world what you're going to do to fight climate change, you can go from that story to learning how to cook a big slab of beef, which there, there more is being said about, uh, a lot more is being said about the climate emergency and the radical paradigm shift and how to cook a steak than anything else uh, in that entire story. The little dog, do you think you're actually maybe thinking about taking a poop? What do you think? Are you going to go take a poop or not? It's been since Thursday. I'm off to help this little dog have a bowel movement. Get out there and cook a steak in your climate emergency while you still can. Bye guys.